Good morning, folks. We've got solar wind on the way. An earthquake warning surges back to life. We look at weather in our top science news, starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. The last day was another quiet one here in the trough of the 11-year sunspot cycle. Small coronal hole departing to the right. Obviously, the large coronal hole looking like a chevron alignment sign is the primary feature of note. We expect impact from the solar wind off the small departing coronal hole first. Looking at the telemetry, we find no impact yet. Speed in purple, second from the bottom, remains below 400 kilometers per second, and the variability above and below in the stream density and temperature are only slight. Up top in blue, we see the interplanetary field streaming from Earth back to Sun. The KP index remains low on the edge of cosmic ray health concerns, but both that and the telemetry are due to ramp up in a few days due to this large one. Earth's magnetically connecting now, so watch that blue phi angle for a shift to field streaming right to Earth from the sun. We'll also be watching this CME risk building up on the incoming southern polar crown. Hope that filament stays low and connected. Here are some shots of Mayon. Ferratic eruptions cap the Philippine mountain, and the exclusion zone is of the utmost importance now with a potentially larger eruption at significant risk. Coming to weather, the story continues in the United States where it has been a couple weeks since we went just one day without cold or record snow falling. Some of those systems were seen gorgeously crossing the pond here on their way towards Europe, and that is our first outlook today. No real way to avoid these two other than luck. You can see how the ocean keeps the rain at temperate marks near the UK, while inland, and even well to the south, it is mostly snow. Top warning goes to New South Wales, where that low is going to drop an ungodly amount of precipitation before running offshore towards New Zealand. Eyes open, please, there. We've got two top science news stories today. The first takes us into the Milky Way and examines the interstellar medium. This would be the region around the astrospheres, the plasma-dominated space between solar systems. And one of the critical aspects to the confusion in cosmology, particle physics, etc., is that we need to know exactly what is out there and how much. We find that the dust, cold gas, and plasma aren't the easiest things to see, and that goes for ionized oxygen as well. It's not the neutral flavor, nor is it fully ionized plasma, but a partially positively charged abundant molecule in space. The problem is that the UV and X-ray views of interstellar mediums show differing amounts of it, off by more than a factor of 10. This is gigantically problematic for analyzing things like velocity dynamics, interactions, dark matter estimations, etc. The latest attempt to correct the problem has failed and wound up standing right where they were before, with two different numbers based on their observations. Lastly here, folks, back in 2017, we set out the earthquake forecasting model and the scientific basis behind it. Since that time, the veracity of the model in statistics is unquestioned. The rationale of the electric circuit from surface to sun hasn't been attacked, but the mechanism for electric current reaching deep regions has been too much for many geologists. Today, in an unrelated paper on batteries, they solved the puzzle. You see, the resistance from above to deep below is not unlike that of the electrolyte interface in a battery. And just like on Earth, they put crystals between the two, lined up like near the low velocity zone, and this is how the telluric and deep mantle currents interact for a full global electric circuit. Link is below, how to predict earthquakes. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org will have a new deeper look later today on that top five natural threats to global civilization video, the criteria, how they were applied to the potential disasters and why some made the list and others did not. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 420 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.